What up, everybody? Let me get to the spot. Hey, everybody, what is going on? This is day 71 of the 100 Day Challenge. Uh, here I'm playing your greatness TV. And the hashtag today is readers are leaders. All right, so let's let the Facebook algorithm take over in three, two, gone. All right, here we are, day 71 of the 100 Day Challenge here on the Plan Your Greatness TV channel. And the hashtag is readers are leaders. All right, so how do we come up with that? Readers are leaders. Well, just thinking about, oh, hold on a second. Got to get my, got to get my books. Shameless plug. It's, this is the new book that's coming out right now. I know it's backwards. When I get my new camera, then you'll see everything more in the right way. And then my, my old, my other book, cause I'm got, I'm actually getting ready for a presentation. That's my, how to plan your greatness. And then, all right. So why do I say readers are leaders is because, um, the average person, or I guess, this is what I'm this is what I'm hearing. The average person reads one book after high school. Isn't that crazy? The average person. Now, now of course there's people that read a bunch of books and there's people that read nothing. But the average person is reading one book after high school. So, if it's not if you're not told to read something, we aren't picking up a book and reading. All right. So, when I was in prison, one of the things that I did was I was afraid of coming out of prison and not being prepared because if you've not heard my story before when i went into prison i went in with a 1.51 high school grade point average i am proud to say that i am a college graduate i graduated with a 3.0 grade point average and i ended i ended up taking additional course, courses and i'm about four classes away from a master's degree i don't know if i'm going to go ahead and pursue that. It's a master's of science and leadership. I may just go ahead and finish it so my kids who did not see me graduate from get my bachelor's degree, they were too young. And uh, so just to have them see me graduate with something. But when I was in prison, I read everything. Um, I read hundreds of books um, on everything you can think of. So, I mean, I was just in this mode of just trying to read everything that I uh, could get my hands on because I thought I was running out of time and I wanted to come out of there as smart as I could be. Um, and the other thing is, when I was younger and I remember asking my dad for some help on a project, he just pointed me into the direction of the library we had in the house. So, which was give him kudos for putting the library in the house but he didn't really know how to direct me to what I needed. And so one of the reasons or one of the things that I wanted to make sure that I did was empower myself with enough knowledge that when my kids asked me for help, I was going to be able to walk them over to my library in the house and say, hey, this is where you get started. This is something because there were some books that my kids were reading in school. And I said, oh, I've read that before. It can, I give them a little bit of idea on it, but then just let them go on their way. But just letting my kids know that, yeah, your dad is is a wealth of information that you can tap into at any time. Um, and I also remember why I said readers are leaders that I remember listening to one of my motivational gurus, one of my motivational mentors, uh, Dr. Dennis Kimbrough. Uh, if you haven't read anything or about him or heard anything or heard him speak, do that. He's a very powerful speaker. But I remember listening to a presentation where he said, if you read a book a week for three years, you'll, you'll be recognized in your community. If you read a book a week for five years, you'll be recognized throughout the country. And if you read a book a week for seven years, you'll get worldwide recognition. Now, I, the understanding is I'm, I'm looking at that is that if you read that much, then there's got to be some sort of platform that you're letting everybody know what you've read which we have now, I think when he, when he wrote that, or when he was giving that presentation, uh, YouTube was not as prominent as it is now. 
But if you read a book a week for three years or five years or seven years, and you just take that knowledge and talk about the books you read or the knowledge that you have, I guarantee if you did that for, if you read book a week for three years and talked about all the books that you read and, and what sort of changes it made in your life, and you did that for three years, five years, seven years, absolutely, you would probably be requested to speak on different things. And that that's what I'm trying to do is not necessarily reading books and then coming back and telling people what I've read is that I am actually reading a lot and then writing stories. This is a very short story about my experience as a Uber driver and the conversations that I had with the people in the vehicles and what came about with that. All right. And so I believe when he's talking about the five years or the seven years that goes into, there's a book called uh, the outlier outliers by Malcolm Gladwell, where he famously mentioned the, the terminology we use now, the 10,000 hours. If you invest 10,000 hours in anything, he says that you're getting pretty close to mastery level, reading, writing, uh, art, whatever, whatever it is. If you have some sort of talent and you can invest 10,000 hours in it, man, you, you, I, I'm, I don't even think you can really imagine what, what level you'll be at if you can do that. And so that's what I'm talking about right now as far as le readers are leaders, that if you can invest that time in reading the 10,000 hours, you are absolutely moving closer to planning your greatness or you're just planning your greatness. All right, I'm gonna leave you with that and I'm gonna leave you what I leave you with every week and that is plan your greatness. You know why? Because no one else will. I will see you all tomorrow.